there, folks. How you doing? Hope you're having a great day. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Goldilocks zone for dry curing meat. So this is going to be a pretty short video as we try to address some of the most popular questions that we get about this particular topic, one of which is recommended temperature and humidity settings for your dry curing chamber. Now, I know that there are a lot of perspectives and opinions online about this topic. So before we begin, take this information with a grain of salt. Do your own research and settle on what works best for you. I'm just going to share with you my personal experience over the years of making charcuterie and dialing in this craft, and hopefully you can take something away from it. All right, so let's get into it. All right, what we're talking about here is temperature and humidity. These are two very important factors that will inevitably determine whether your charcuterie is going to be mediocre or extraordinary. And what we're trying to do is create an environment inside of our drying chamber that allows the bacteria and the mold to continue to age the meat, but at the same time control the way that moisture is lost so that we have a piece of meat that's properly aged and properly dried at the exact same time. You see, you can't really have one or the other in a drying chamber. They both have to work together. For instance, if you have the right temperature but the wrong humidity, your meat could either dry too slow or too fast, in which case both circumstances could result in spoilage. So being able to find that perfect balance of temperature and humidity where everything is drying and aging at the exact same rate uh, is absolutely critical to produce high quality charcuterie. And there's really two schools of thought when it comes to temperature and humidity in a dry curing chamber for dry curing meats. The first is to keep the temperature between roughly 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit, so somewhere in that range, and keep the humidity between roughly 70 and 80 percent. All right, so that's the first school of thought. The second school of thought is to keep your temperature the same, roughly between 50 and 60 Fahrenheit, but start off with an elevated humidity, let's say 85, 87 percent during the first week. After the first week, you're going to stair step that humidity down to 85 percent, 84 percent, after week number three, you're going to stair step it down a little bit more. And that particular uh, practice is trying to mirror the amount of moisture inside your meat to allow it to dry more evenly. I've tried both ways and they both work. I mean, they produce relatively good results. But the only thing I don't like about the stair step of the humidity method is that once you put your initial batch of meat inside your chamber and you begin working on you know, a reduction of humidity program over the next three or four weeks, uh, it gets a little complicated when you want to add more meat to it. And if you're anything like me, you know, you'll make salami one week, you'll do whole mussels another week, maybe you'll do another batch of salami after week three or week four, and you have uh, different meat projects at different stages inside your chamber and following the program of stair stepping the humidity just gets a little complicated. So our method is a little different, but not by much, just a little bit. And I'm going to be showing you the settings that we use inside of our dry curing chamber. I'm going to be calling this zone the Goldilocks zone for charcuterie because it is absolutely perfect. Your meat dries nice and slow, nice and even. The uh, flavors and the mold and the bacteria continue to develop and age, and you end up with absolutely spectacular salami, salumi, you know, just depends on what you're making. All right, so what's this magical zone I keep talking about? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The temperature that I keep my dry curing chamber at, and my chamber happens to be a modified frost-free refrigerator, is 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius. And we can achieve that temperature by using a temperature controller. Now, this is a relatively affordable unit from Inkbird, but you can also get them from Auber or Johnson. And all we do is plug the refrigerator into the cooling port and the controller now takes over the operation as it cycles power on and off to the refrigerator, maintaining our preset, which happens to be 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the temperature that I keep my chamber at. It's been like that for four plus years and I've never changed it. And that brings us to humidity control. Now, what I like to do inside my chamber is keep an average humidity of 80%. Now, I can easily do that by using a humidity controller. This is also one from Inkbird, but other companies uh, like Auber make nice humidity controllers. And what happens here is we plug a humidifier and a dehumidifier into this controller, and the controller now takes over the humidity operation as it cycles power on and off 
to the humidifier and the dehumidifier, trying to maintain that average of 80%. What I found is that maintaining a temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit with an average humidity of 80% does wonders for your meat. First and foremost, it's gonna slow the drying process down. Now, granted, that does mean your meat is gonna take a little bit longer to dry, but it also means that it's gonna reduce the risk of you getting dry ring or case hardening. And because you have a slightly extended drying time, it's gonna allow the meat to age more and develop its flavors a lot more deeply. The best part about the Goldilocks zone for charcuterie is that you can add any meat project at any given point, uh, no matter what stage you're at in the game. So if you start off making salami and you want to add a prosciutto, you could put your prosciutto right on in there. You do not have to change the settings. If you want to come back and add a small diameter salamini or maybe even duck or something that's not very big, you do not have to worry about it. The settings are absolutely perfect and they work no matter what you put in your chamber. All right, let's take a look at the controllers. These are the two I was talking about from Inkbird. Notice how my temperature is set to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. My humidity is set to 80%. The refrigerator is plugged into the temperature controller. The dehumidifier and humidifier is plugged into the humidity controller. And like I said earlier, the slightly elevated humidity is going to allow the sausages, the salami, the charcuterie to dry a little bit slower. You can see right here we've got a lot of different projects all you know happening at the same time. We've got Culatello in the back. It's been in there for six, seven months. We've got small diameter, large diameter salami. Everything's drying really nice and evenly. Uh, and there's our humidifier and our dehumidifier. And that's it. It's a pretty basic setup. The controls do most of the work and the refrigerator just kind of maintains that environment. So let's just take a peek at some of the end results of some of the projects that we've produced using this Goldilocks zone setting. All right, folks, there you have it. That's the Goldilocks zone for charcuterie, 55 Fahrenheit, 80% humidity. If you're currently not working in those parameters and you're not happy with the results that you're getting, I invite you to go to your controls right now, tweak your settings and drop me a comment once you start seeing some awesome results. Now, with that being said, if you are working under those parameters and you're still not happy with your results, there's a decent chance you're dealing with an airflow issue which we'll have to cover in a different video. If you have any questions, drop me a comment in the comment section below. And if you like this video or got anything out of it, a thumbs up is always helpful. If you're into salami making, charcuterie, sausage making, I invite you to click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of our uploads. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.